The Egyptians are believed to have invented the glass bottle around 4,000 years ago. But it was the invention of the automatic glass blowing machine in 1899, just in time to capitalize on the growing popularity of carbonated soft drinks, that led to the explosion in the use of glass containers. Just after the turn of the century, glass bottle production increased from 1,500 to 57,000 bottles a day. Traditionally, bottles were returned to merchants to be reused under a deposit refund system, which changed after World War II with the introduction of the steel can, heavily promoted by beer brewers. No deposit, no return was a byword for convenience. It also meant swelling boneyards of glass bottles and metal cans. Starting in the 1970s, glass containers were among the items recycling programs attempted to divert from the boneyard. The idea was that recycling glass would save landfill space as well as energy and natural resources. Recycling just one bottle could save enough energy to power a computer for 25 minutes. Recycling a ton of glass would keep 315 kilograms of carbon dioxide from entering the air. Glass bottles traveling through a MRF where they constitute about 15% by volume end up shattered in pieces. But glass must be sorted according to colors before it can be used to produce new glass. And other processes add more expense. The result being that, until 10 years ago, glass recycling was often a money-losing venture. Glass um, gets mixed with all these other recyclables. It has to be pulled out by hand and then shipped to other places. It takes quite a bit of work to make it clean again. And therefore, a lot of it just doesn't make it back into new bottles. But it really can be used for other purposes, and that's where we came in with some different solutions and technology. If processed correctly, boneyard glass can be turned back into sand or gravel and used in the same applications as those materials. Fifteen years ago, a practical machine for that purpose didn't exist. Cynthia Andela and her husband James, who both have degrees in engineering, discussed the problem. And afterward, James invented one of the most innovative machines ever to be used in a garbage boneyard, the Andela Glass Pulverizer. Cynthia then started the company that builds and sells them to a growing market, from municipal recycling containers to cruise ships that use a scaled-down version. The Andela system not only pulverizes up to 20 tons of glass per hour, but sorts it by color and screens out the impurities. The end product is actually kinder to bare feet than natural sand and gravel. Then all those sharp edges get broken off. So it's used for mulch around our um, driveway, on our driveway, around our bushes. My children played in, their, played in the sandbox with it. And it's beautiful, it sparkles. Glass aggregate processed by Andela machines is being used for everything from road construction with glass fault to sandblasting medium and arts and crafts. As the glass is dumped into the surge hopper, the reciprocating plate feeder regulates the flow, which allows time for the material to be thoroughly processed. It's a chance for the, all the glass to get hit by hammers. If you put too much glass in at one time, it doesn't all get hit and rounded and reduced in size. The hammers are what we call a flexible impactor. They have two joints on them and flexibility, sort of like your hand and your elbow and your shoulder. You have uh, these flying hammers going in circles. If something gets in there like a plastic jug, or a baseball. The hammers have the flexibility to get out of the way and just deflect. So when it comes out of the pulverizer, the glass has been reduced into a fine sand, but the baseball it comes out whole. As the material is pulled through the machine, it enters the trommel, a rotating drum with perforated sides, which screens the glass from bottle caps, trash, and other residue. Besides pulverizing the glass, the hammers also pull the material through the barrel in the Andela patented design. The hammers are, are arranged on the shaft in a 90 degree spiral. That way, this one, this one, this one, this one, go around the shaft in a progressive uh, fashion. So as I turn that shaft, the hammers appear to be walking away from me. Now that causes material to move through my somewhat cylindrical barrel in an orderly fashion. It's very efficient. James Andela's other inventions include a larger pulverizer with bigger hammers that munches down heavier loads than the conventional model, including toilet bowls and other large ceramics. The windshield stripper is another machine which beats the protective plastic coating out of a windshield in seconds. 
All these machines are built at Andela's tool and die shop. Everything down to the hammers, which are fashioned on a 70-year-old turret lathe salvaged from a World War II Navy destroyer. The hammers are made from a specially hardened abrasion-resistant steel because of the extremely abrasive environment inside the glass pulverizer. I drill a hole so I can locate it in my machine, put them in a mill, and we put a slot through it. Or we can assemble it with a hammer and a stanchion, which bolts to the shaft. When James Andela gets an idea for a new machine, he usually finds the basic parts and the inspiration in his own tool shop boneyard or a neighbor's. The picture you're seeing is of our original prototype. I used a running gear from an old hay wagon. The conveyor on it is a, is a grain conveyor. A friend of mine had some short pieces of 24-inch gas pipe. One piece was 44 inches long and one piece was 58 inches long. And I went and looked at his pile of junk and I said, they look good to me. The machines that we make today are the same length. When a customer asked him to take a look at the hub of his Ford pickup truck, James realized he'd found the ideal bearing holder for the pulverizer's reciprocating plate feeder. I've never had to change this part. I've bought over 150 of these to make machines out of. The Andellas have also constructed a complete one-stop glass recycling system at their location in Ridgefield Springs, New York. It's a part of their long-term goal not only to educate potential adopters of their systems, but to promote the recycling of glass on a much grander scale. Despite remarkable advances in the technology of recycling resources, there are many types of trash that still end up in landfills. But even here, technology has found new ways to manage waste, even to make it pay its own way. <laughs>